welcome. I got my cup of coffee and I hope you've got yours. And here's what I envision. That listening to me now is a local church prayer leadership learning team where we don't have mentoring teams or where we do have mentoring teams or we're launching them. There may be several churches in the room and you're around tables and I want this to be a relaxed evening where we stop this video and go and discuss and, 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 and talk. If you're ready to go, we're going to do this in bite sizes through the evening. First, this is an orientation meeting for local church prayer leadership teams that really want to launch a seven markers of a praying church or the four dimensions of a praying church movement using as a primary resource guide the praying church resource guide. And you need one of these in the room or extra ones that you can kind of pass around tonight and in future, uh, in future meetings. My assumption is that we will spend time reviewing this manual, a quick overview. We'll focus on doing activities for the next year. We'll spend time considering an envisioning evening. And then we'll talk about the curriculum for the learning team that'll take place over the next two quarters. And, and finally, we may spend some time talking about uh, special days of prayer that are coming up or uh, an overview of the whole uh, process together. Now, uh, reviewing the resource guide, let me tell you that my assumption is, again, that each of you have one of those praying church manuals. Now, we've just completed this so that you can get additional copies that are perfect bound. They're, they're not as expensive to produce. They're still not cheap. They're about, about three, four, 99. So you can pass them around among your leadership team. They're exactly like the others with wide margins to make notes. And uh, our hope is that this will become kind of our Bible for prayer ministries for the next few years as we kind of find our way to what it means to be a praying church. Uh, it's $15 a month. Uh, you get a free manual or other options, all kind of resources, and that helps us continue to help, uh, to help you. What is the praying church movement? Well, it's a group of churches who enter into a process to bring prayer to the heart of all they do. They embrace the four-dimensional model at home, daily, to be like Jesus, praying. A, a goal of re restoring the family altar, couples praying together, one of the hardest things to, to, to establish, but the most fruitful of all the things we do. Second, a, a praying church, not just a church with a prayer ministry, but a church that brings prayer to the heart of everything they do. Uh, we can't throw man manpower and money at spiritual problems. It won't fix them. So, so we need to bathe everything we're doing in prayer, a pervasive movement of prayer in the church. The church gathered regularly just to pray. Number, number three, uh, identified, trained, team, debriefed intercessors. And then take the power of prayer, number four, and turn it outward. You need a mission feel near and a mission feel far. One you can touch, one you can handle, one you can smell, one you can wade into. And then, and then, and then Kenya or Ecuador or somewhere else uh, that you're engaged in for praying. Here's what you want is you want, you want three to five people at the table if you're a church of zero to 50. You want four to seven for a church of 50 to 100. You want five to eight for a church of up to, say, 200. You, you want seven to 12 if you're a church of up to 500. And for, for a church of 500, maybe 10 or more who are at this table every quarter, who are engaged in a learning process to become the prayer leaders of your congregation. The Prayer Leadership Manual is this extraordinary book of almost 700 pages of resource material. We started helping churches or trying to help churches and we found we didn't have the resources to do it. So we created this extensive manual, section one, first things, section two, 
getting organized. Section three, it, it, it's, it's, it's personal and family prayer. Section four, uh, the church at prayer. Section five, prayer groups. Section six, mobilizing intercessors. Section seven, prayer evangelism. Section eight, prayer throughout the year. Uh, section uh, nine, all kind of additional resources. We won't go through this entire manual tonight, but we're going to take a look at the first couple sections to help you lay the foundation you need to begin the process of prayer. Here's the wrong way to do this. Start quick, and prayer is a fad, and it will fizzle very quickly. If you emphasize the public aspect too fast, just try to get a lot of prayer activities going. It'll be a phase that you pass through. What you need is to train leaders who have a healthy theology of prayer and keep this from being a fad. People who are committed for the next three to five years to, to make prayer a critical part of what you want to do. You want a measured, tempered integration of prayer into everything you do in the church. So rather than a fad, what you want is a slow process, a very deliberate process. You want to put some roots down. Uh, and so the public aspect of what you do in prayer has an equally important aspect, and that's the private, the counterpart. You're laying a solid foundation of prayer, and you'll have ups and downs. You'll have events, and that'll measure your capacity to mobilize the people to pray. What do they respond to? And then you'll have this developing leaders on the bottom side. Uh, you'll, you'll teach into the learning gaps. You'll train after you have a great event or, a, or, a, or an event that's not as great as you thought. You'll teach into those learning gaps to move you forward, up and down slowly. You're moving towards your goal of becoming a praying church. You're going to do prayer, and then you're going to establish a learning team, and then you're going to establish a planning team, and then you'll end up with a vetted, deeply committed leadership team. These are the processes for the first year that we want to uh, engage in. You want to have public prayer experiences. Not too many. That may surprise you. you, you, you but you want to engage in quiet, private, almost off the radar screen, growing a team of prayer uh, leaders. You want to consider the great days of prayer. That's the first Sunday of every quarter, and there are fresh materials online. You, you may want to consider the 21 days of fasting in January. We just passed that. We have a daily devotional you can distribute every day. You may, want, you may be doing now the Seek God for the City. Uh, there's a fall prayer emphasis, uh, the National Day of Prayer, the Global Day of Prayer on Pentecost Sunday, the Call to Fall uh, Sunday, all kind of other activities that will take place during uh, the year. There's a Prayer Through the Year uh, resource section in the guide. I mentioned it a moment ago. You can pull all kind of resources here, not too many, just enough to keep prayer and prayer efforts public. You want to be doing prayer. But here's what you want to be doing under the radar screen. You want to envision a, a praying church and keep putting that forward. Maybe even have, I'll talk about it in a minute, an envisioning evening. And then you want to start a learning process with a small group of leaders, three to five, 10 or more, depending on the size of your church. That'll become a planning team, and eventually that will become your prayer leadership, your prayer leadership team. These two processes working, working simultaneously. If you will go to www.praycog, and if you will pull up the site, right here on this tab, you'll find Great Days of Prayer. If you'll click on Great Days of Prayer, it will open an entire section uh, uh, and it'll give you fresh materials on the great day of prayer that's coming next. If you'll go all the way to the bottom of this, 
you'll find a tab that says Great Day of Prayer Resources. Click there. There are PowerPoints on occasion. There's uh, guidelines, outlines, bulletin inserts on occasion, guides that you can pass out. Uh, you may not like the current resource. There are other resources there. Once a quarter, you'll find fresh Great Day of Prayer resources. Then, in addition, if you'll click on the second tab, Special Initiatives, you'll find the Great Days of Prayer, Fasting for His Favor materials, you'll find Seek God for the City, you'll find a Fall Prayer Emphasis. If you'll click here, Prayer Through the Year, you'll find an entire section, some with embedded videos, where you can pull that down and get all kind of other uh, prayer materials that are happening around the world, literally, that your church can participate in and be a part of. Now, here's what I want you to do. Uh, stop this video, grab you a cup of coffee, come back and have a table moment. And I want you to discuss first year events, how you can make great days of prayer more effective. What about the fasting initiative, the Seek God for the City initiative? If you have this manual, if you'll look on page 24 in section 1, it has the seven commitments of a praying church. It has the four-dimensional model on page 25. If you'll go to section 1, it has first year goals. Take a moment now with that manual open and glance through first year suggested prayer activities. They're far more than you're going to be able to use. Uh, and then if you'll go to, to page 10, here's your action item. Project a first year prayer calendar. In fact, if you'll keep turning the pages, it'll have learning and doing, and then it'll have our first year prayer activities are these. So take a moment right now and just kind of plan your next 12 months. What could we do at our church without doing too much to, to, to bring prayer regularly, systematically before our congregation? And we'll be back in just a few minutes.